let's go to this exciting world of entrepreneurship and you know to launch the product and stuff like that uh, interesting you know how do i go it how do i take it so this is uh, in the lean startup terminology phase this is this phase comes after you have achieved what is called as the product market fitness right in the sense you have now developed a product which for which there is a clearly identified market out there that means there are defined customers there are uh, you know uh, there is a certain pain capacity of the customer to pay for your product and service there is a certain need that you you know uh, have discovered which the customer is willing to dip into his pocket you know take out the money and hand it over to you so there is this whole value proposition that your product has created so you are, you have realized that okay i have now have a product which probably uh, you know uh, for which there is a market so once you achieve that product market fit and it can happen you know fairly early if you kind of uh, you know try and understand this process very well but you can't be just be happy with right 5 10 15 20 20 customers 100 customers you need to kind of expand go out go out at, into the whole big market and that is where this go to market strategy or the gtm strategy comes into uh, the place this is a wrong slide do not get confused we are on session 7 so in a previous session i think the session 6 was 7 and now we are at session 7 so this is what we are talking of in terms of here we have still two more sessions to go uh okay so let's quickly go with you know what what is it that uh we are going to talk about in today's work one of the very interesting things that we tend to neglect is uh, you know the legal uh correctness of whatever we are going to be talking about in our product right i mean we can't just make tall claims we can't just use you know ms dhoni's photograph on our product i mean there are uh, legal issues there are uh, ip related issues there are trademark related issues right for example you can't use the vadwani foundation logo that you see on the right hand in any format you can't see that no no that does not mean vadwani foundation the whole logo that you see i don't know if my cursor is visible but this whole logo that you see okay with the with the vadwani written in that particular font the foundation written in a particular font the logo the color schemes this all absolutely copyrighted right you can't just go and say no i was using this logo for you know, probably selling shampoos you can't do that so we will talk about this legal part this is very interesting we'll also talk about uh, you know how do we really strategize and add some method to the madness as you take your product from uh, you know from your lab to the market marketplace right this is what you are actually going to do you have created something in the back end you you are kind of now confident that people are going to buy it you already have a few initial customers who have actually paid for buying this stuff so now you are really moving into the mainstream market with your product so this is what we are going to talk about quickly in, in today's take up right so let us come down to our most famous uh, uh slide that we always end up using over here that the the point of nirvana or you know the golden sweet spot that we had is right at the middle of four things right four things are that there is a market that is willing to buy you have a product that you know satisfies the needs what the market wants you have a team which is committed to uh, deliver uh, on the vision that you have thought about you know and then of course it is viable that means it has a business model it is going to make you money not probably in the short run but in the long run it's going to make sense for you to really do. so at the center of this desirability feasibility compatibility viability lies that ultimate sweet spot if you are able to reach that that spot over there then i think you have a winner over here okay so let us talk i mean this is the boring part but this is something that you need to you know kind of get it off the shoulders uh, very important I mean, especially in today's terms okay especially in today's terms see i remember 95 when i first started uh, you know uh, my company it was a kind of because i was all alone so it was kind of a proprietary ship company you can say like a one man company that thing nobody else no other partners nothing 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 and i almost ran it for one one and a half years because you know i didn't really see the need for somebody else but then as it started growing and then i start i had to get a team 
I had to allot you know responsibilities. I had to what in today's world we call as co-founders. You know, so then I had to allot shares to them. That's the time I converted my company from a proprietorship company to a limited liability uh, company. What does the limited liability means? Uh, this is a recognized by law. Okay, proprietary firms are not recognized by law as firms. You know, as 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 corporate entities, right? So if you need to really get the law to you know uh, recognize you, you have to at least become in today's world, if not a private limited company, you need to at least become a limited liability partnership. This is a completely different you know knowledge that you have to get. My personal request to all of you is, you know, talk to your dad or, you know, mentor or, you know, get in touch with a chartered accountant friend or somebody who's done chartered accountancy who understands how incorporation of companies are done. Sit with them. Don't gloss over it. And, you know, it's like not me and Vinayak, you know, starting something over some, you know, couple of bottles of beer in the evening and say, okay, Vinayak, you and me are partners now. We are going to be 50-50 partners and let us form a company, right? I mean. These are very loosely defined uh, uh, terms that I'm talking about, right? And tomorrow morning, when I'm back to my senses and then I realize, oh God, what did I do? You know, why, why should Vinayak be 50% partner in my company? He should actually only be 10% uh, partner, right? I'm the main guy. I'm the guy who has kind of, uh, you know, done this, put in all the hard work, got in all the customers, put in all the money. But then, you know, a uh, couple of years can do a lot of stuff to a lot of people. So you end up, you know, making all those classic mistakes that have. That is why a founder's agreement is important. Founder's agreement is nothing but a kind of a document that tells that, you know, between four of us, let us assume who's going to play what role, who's going to own how much percentage of the company that uh, uh, we're talking of. It could be in terms of percentage, right? Saying that, okay, I will own 40%, somebody will own 30%, the other guys will own 15, 15%. Uh, of the company and you know this is so whatever it is the size of the company we will have this percentage defined so founders agreement is a very clearly it's also sometimes called the shareholders agreement uh, if you execute it it's clearly an understanding between four people as to how the ownership of the company is defined okay so today it is very important why it is very important because for a simple startup india uh, fund scheme that if you let us assume that as a startup, you want to go and you know get uh, funding from the government of India, which is a very fantastic scheme that has been there, a startup India fund scheme, or any of this, you know, uh, Nidhi Praya schemes and a lot of incubation related schemes where you can get uh, grants for doing that. But to get all those things, you need to be registered as a company. You can't go on as individuals and say, okay, we four have decided to form a company and uh, you know, we are, we are going to go and get into business. People want you to comply with the legal provisions right at uh, right at the beginning. That means you need to incorporate your company either as a limited liability partnership or, uh, or a private limited company. Okay, you need to have founders agreement. You need to have, of course, a certification of in incorporation. Now, nowadays, uh, there is a certain company name reservation like for example you can't go and uh, register a company say you no know, reliance geo.com or something like that right because names have names the the department of uh, uh, corporate affairs <coughs> in india has a search directory in which you go and look out for a name and own, you can only choose that name that is available for you to buy okay and you will get it registered in your name that means you become the legal owner of the name of the company so that is why you will see that the brand names are different. Zomato as a company is different. And what the comp the holding company of Zomato is uh, uh, different. I, I forgot the name of the holding company of uh, uh, Zomato. But when you go and check for Zomato is the brand name, which is okay, which, which, which is what people know it as. But the name of the company that holds this particular brand name could be totally different. It cannot be Zomato. It is definitely not Zomato. In the old days, it was there. Like, for example, Wipro brand is owned by Wipro Limited Company. Right? Because those are older days. Names could be uh, available and you could have the name of your company. And people had, I mean, in the great, great olden days. So, you know, people had their family names as brands. So the brands that you recognize today, for example, Ford. 
okay or a bata or a cadbury these are nothing but the names of the the founding names of the you know companies that uh, uh, that formed this particular company right kodak for example if you know kodak is actually in the name of the family name of the uh, guy who invented the photography uh, business okay bose our most famous uh, product if you are in if you are a music uh, lover you would know a company called bose a very interesting you uh, know owned by a mit professor indian uh, professor uh, you know founded bose he is probably the world's best known authority on sound as a as a science okay and then when he passed away he passed away i think couple of years back he donated this company is now almost a billion dollar organization he donated the entire company back to mit so he was working till his last day he was working as a professor in mit and still having a company in his own name which which we all now know as uh, bose so amarendra professor amarendra bose is the name of the uh, entrepreneur slash professor uh, over there okay so these are names which are easily available like right? you know bata for example owned by a gentleman called mr bata or whatever his first name was okay so those days were gone then came companies like you know uh, reliance for example right reliance basically try to give you a name to a company which says okay we are reliable people you can rely on us you can you know grow with us and stuff like that. now of course it's owned by the ambani family which is different so today you'll have to be very clear in your mind that you know my name of the company is different my brand could be different do not get confused between the two you may find a name of a company which you can take brand you can build around of course as long as it doesn't clash with any other brand uh, that is there already in the market for example amul you know i don't know how legally right it makes you know there is an amul which is a big brand which is sells you butter milk and all the stuff and then there is amul underwear right i mean somebody Use the small loophole in the in the law to kind of create these two brands over there, or Lux for that matter. Okay, so uh, you need to be very clear. Uh, there is something called as a director's information numbers now, DIN number, which as a director in an organization you will be allotted. It will be like your personal number. So if Vinayak Joshi is a director in one company, he gets one DIN number, and that DIN number remains common. So tomorrow Vinayak becomes leaves that company, becomes a director in another company. or he becomes a uh, director in multiple companies the din number will not change so the din number will clearly identify him as vinayak joshi you know everything it's like the personal aadhar card or social identification number over there okay so today there are a lot of compliances that you need to uh, get uh, into my humble request to all people who are even thinking of becoming entrepreneurs and that is what this program is here take Uh, you know professional help don't go by i heard from someone or i thought something about this or i was not sure what should i have been doing for example you know pollution is a very very important thing if you are into chemical industry or manufacturing ring of any electronic items that needs very high level of you know pollution control uh, certification for you if you are into health care if you are planning to do something in food industry which is most common what people want to do right i mean they want to do something so you need something called as an fssai uh, certification that means anything that you apply if you make a skin cream or you know anything that goes inside your mouth wherever there is a human touch fssai is an organization that certifies that this product is there if you are going to make some pharmaceutical product then it's a completely different uh, you know uh, certification authority that you need if you today are going to make some uh, you know e gaming or sports games kind of a thing you need certification from a certain authorities that this is not gambling this is not money laundering the government is today very strictly monitoring all online activities of all these firms you know that are into uh, e sports or fantasy gaming and stuff like that because they have been known to be used for purposes other than the one that they had been built for okay so patents patents is again very very important uh, criteria you may think that you know is something that you just dreamt out of uh, uh, you know dreamt out of things you know but pay, you know you need to kind of understand that uh, is there a patent infringement believe me if you get any of these things wrong okay you will be dead before you even start right so that this that is 
that is as serious as this topic is uh, when it comes to doing so please get professional help don't don't go by what i am trying to tell you i am not a professional i know most of this stuff because i did it myself or i am involved with startups uh, that are doing this but i will not be the right person to guide you a professional chartered accountant a professional lawyer a professional tax consultant are the people uh, who will help you uh, get get into this okay so let's look at uh, you know uh, a certain amount of risk mitigation that we should think about while uh, uh, you know while, while planning our business and these are some maybe like we said we need to be very clear about the statutory part of it you know we need to also be clear about that this is going to be a risky stuff over here and i need to understand couple of things is what if things go wrong what would be his impact you know and what do i do to mitigate it what do i do for example you know uh, to mitigate it and there could be like a million stuff that can go wrong right for example talent which is my most favorite thing you think somebody is a full stack developer you heard about him and you saw his linkedin profile and uh, you know you uh, you decided to hire him or whatever it is right now the probability that the guy doesn't know anything about you know uh, a scale out architecture or has never used any cloud based tool stuff like that the direct impact on your business is going to be very high because if you hired the wrong person believe me that's this is disastrous okay. simple you you and today in today's world unfortunately the you know the the chance of you getting it wrong is higher than the chance of you getting it right that's why you be very careful when you're getting into an agreement i mean i've seen large startups you know uh, end up disastrously because they just hired the wrong people okay they just went with the went with recommendations or linkedin and I mean, people generally tend to fake everything uh, today so be very clear take some uh, you know ref checks see the actual work the person has delivered right just don't don't go and hire someone because you're desperately needing somebody out over there especially in the tech space okay i i just want you to be very clear that people can claim a lot of stuff on linkedin and claim you know i've done this i've done that i have you know so much recommendations all that all that can uh, be questionable and we will seriously impact you right so that means the probability of getting it high is wrong and then the impact is also very high because you hire the wrong set of people god same thing is with marketing right marketing also you could end up in a wrong uh market or a wrong target customer segment or a wrong communication uh stuff like that right but it's not as high as probably i don't know i mean i would not rate it as high as uh, uh hiring wrong talent right hiring wrong talent is like getting married to a wrong person and it could like could become disastrous marketing is like probably a holiday gone wrong next time you learn about it okay this doesn't work maybe instagram is not the right uh you know right medium to get, get across because my target segment is you know 40 year old parents you know they are not on instagram so i spent some money on instagram marketing and then i realized that my target segment is just not uh, be able to relate my product on an instagram kind of thing. if it's a more young younger kind of a thing than insta reels or i don't know tiktok equivalent whatever uh, these are some of the tools that you can use okay so these are this is basically a template that we have included in uh, in on the platform okay so here you need to really you need to sit as in when you are ready to go into the market and launch it you need to sit and you know list this down and say okay is there some risk that i'm thinking of the product is it illegal right for example uh, you know at iit mandi catalyst uh, we are in uh, you know himachal pradesh so himachal pradesh is very famous for hemp right now hemp the first association with hemp becomes you know like it is it is uh, weed or it is some 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 kind of some kind of a drug or something like that and people don't realize that hemp can be used for a lot many purposes there are people who are making fabrics out of hemp there are people who are making uh, you know uh, they are making what is it i mean they are kind of using hemp for a lot of other purposes and medicines that have been made out of hemp part of it okay so fabric has been made out of hemp but the first is is the same thing with uh, you know uh, cryptocurrency also 
most of the time when you talk about bitcoins and stuff like that everybody thinks it's illegal at first right it's not illegal the definition of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable is different now rbi is trying to come up with its own version of cryptocurrency now this actually goes against what cryptocurrency stand for right cryptocurrencies they're supposed to be non sovereign currency that means not owned by any government not owned by any country not owned by any individual on outside the influence of all this you know stuff bitcoin was supposed to be actually a democratic uh, currency that people were to use but the first thing you hear the word cryptocurrency bitcoins you know doge coins now and then you first start thinking that it is probably illegal we don't know what to do about it so be very clear that you know what are the risks that you're facing with the product with the talent with the marketing funding if you don't get funding you are assuming that you know once i launch this in 6 months time i'm going to get funding and then i'm going to use this what if that doesn't happen okay what if the money doesn't come the time you really want to scale it out right today currently you're using some grants from the government some you know some of your own money that you saved but what happens if this doesn't come right on time what is the mitigation factor over the mitigation basically means what is the plan b or what is it that you think you will do if this doesn't happen by the right so put it out is a nice template that you can use it okay one good and one of the simplest you know what i should say uh, thing that you can do uh, with your team or with your own self for that matter and you know even before you take this product how to the market you can actually uh, make a swot analysis of you know of the market out there what is it that you know the market really is trying to tell you or what is it that you think can go wrong what is it that so everybody understands swot analysis so uh vinay let me kind of bring in uh you over here and uh, if you want you know want to ask something or all right so uh so the first question which i have to ask and i actually wrote a few down in my phone so the first question is uh as someone who is doing his under who's finishing his undergrad right now i have met yeah, a lot of so right that is i think the oh, info age i don't know but uh, yeah i yeah. think info age oh. yeah sorry vinay so, gold ha ha the question is uh, a lot of students they sort of overlook the part of legalities because uh, they are too much legalities ha ha because they don't know ha to is there like how do you know get to know about it of course one thing is uh, approaching a professional ca but it's not affordable for somebody who is in his college room to starting something out to approach one right so like how can one so let me let me be i mean let me not be as fatalistic and tell you that all ca's will charge you money or something like that okay uh, go and talk i'm sure within your family family network uh, uh you know so uh, info at saurav jain if i am not mistaken because it's striking in my mind is uh, nokri.com uh, owners okay they promoted dipinder goel initially they funded dipinder goel and his team to form uh, uh, zomato so the name of the company could be different but info edge could be a major uh, holding in zomato i agree i may be wrong but you can any case check it yes so when i coming back to you i would say that it's not that there there are a lot of free sessions by the way that are now happening online with various incubations and stuff like that wherein we 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 bring in those started accountants we create that those conversation with startups we create those ama sessions with you know those legal experts and uh, uh, but the problem is nobody will explain it to you like a for apple b for ball type of a thing right so if some study you need to do it on your own and then probably you need to go and ask query for example you can't just sit and wait for the ca to come and explain everything nobody will do that he is a professional he is not a teacher right so you need to find out you need to go online download a founders agreement you know go through the founders agreement and then if there are any queries then go out and say okay how does this clause affect me how does this clause uh, you know uh, for example there is a clause called as right of first refusal it's called as the rofer clause mostly referred to as the rofer that means let's assume that you me and sudanshu are partners 
and for some vague reason sudhanju decides that you know he doesn't want to be a partner any longer and he wants to you know whatever go to australia i don't know where he wants to go but uh, you know uh, so what happens to his shares you know how do they get distributed between the two remaining partners okay that means or should we bring in say saurav jain as the fourth partner and then get him to buy uh, sudhanju's uh, shares so who has the right of first refusal that means sudhanju has to first offer the shares to us we have to say okay we don't want to buy but thank you any case he says okay if you don't want to buy i let me go to saurav and he is willing to buy my shares and he is willing to come in as the uh, you know as the third partner now which is okay with us so but that clause has to be there i mean it can't be left in limbo and said are yahan dekhenge jis din sudhanshu jayega us din you know we'll figure out something out okay so this legality is very 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 crucial i even tell a lot of the startups that you know uh, if you get hit with this legal troubles right i mean then even before you start up you are finished you know let's assume you are infringing on somebody's copyrights or you have not taken permissions to launch something first day you will be closed i mean you may think that you are a brilliant some software you know that is some brilliant work that you are doing and government is very difficult to convince that it, see what is legal what is illegal who decides the government decides right i mean tomorrow like in in the state of washington i think now in the whole of united states selling of weed is legal but 10 years back selling of weed was illegal so the government monday just got up and said now what it's okay legal same thing is with gutka you know in india let us assume tomorrow you want to bring out some uh, you know mouth freshener let's 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 use a very simple a simplest example you know you want to bring in some mouth freshener or something something like that and the government says no no this actually is not a mouth freshener it's a gutka item or it's a you know banned item then you're finished even before you start you know nobody is going to touch it right i mean nobody is going to get so you need to be very clear what is it if energy drinks which is very very important drink right everybody thinks that energy drinks monster and that uh, what is that uh, what's that famous uh, uh, red bull red bull red bull and it's a great market a great market great margins you look at it you know this 100 150 ml thing costs about 120 bucks right and uh, so it's a tremendous amount of market uh, you know margin business but you know you don't know i mean tomorrow it can just get classified as a uh, as as a drink that is just banned and then you're out of it uh, okay. same thing sports right i mean you think that you're doing fantasy sports or e gaming or whatever it is but the government says no no you're using it for money laundering purpose you know you're actually creating uh, your it's a gambling business or something like that right online gambling so so be very very careful spend some time and in that budget some time and say in the next two months i'm just only going to you know look at all the legalities everything done part of it spend that much time to research the uh, startup of your business because today you can't unless you get a new uh, unless you get a dpi tt number Which is which is very important. You can't get into the startup India fund scheme. Okay. Yeah, sir. I guess uh, apart yeah, from that, I'm going to be saying that you know in Tamil Nadu, yeah, Tamil Nadu very dangerous. You know, two governments keep on changing. They have completely diametrical views of what is legal and not legal. So I I remember we were the first company to develop what is called now called as play win. You know, online lottery. so when one government was there it said no no it is absolutely legal you can run it and overnightly there was elections the, this old government went new government came they said no it's completely illegal so they said let's ban it so but those are risks like i said no those are some of the risks that as startups you may need to <coughs> start thinking shall we move forward i don't know uh, absolutely sir we can move forward and uh, i'll ask two questions that i have and till the time guys you can also put in the questions in the chat and maybe uh, when sir takes a break we can ask him the questions what to tell okay so one thing to uh, also think about uh, is uh, you know launch also needs to be in uh, you know in phases you can't just go uh, and fully launch the product and say okay this is what it is So generally, people say generally, okay. Then this is again a, 
the terminological difference part of it is that you know there is something called as a pre-pilot which is nothing but you know kind of crude lab version that you kind of you know want to first test for all the features and stuff like that and there is an alpha alpha is you know working prototype but you know not taken to the customer as yet beta is what you can take to a limited set of customers you know let, for example let's assume my favorite example let's assume that you have a you want to set up a you know cake and pastry shop right so you don't day, day one just don't go and open a big sh shop and say okay i'm going to launch cakes right you'll make those small pastries go out give it to your friends give it to your neighbors you know ask for feedback and say hey what do you think what is it that you like you know does it does it does it kind of you know uh, fit into what i'm trying to communicate out over here? and from there you have to move to what is called as the full release uh, of the product right we talked about brand uh, to a certain age you know yeah see look at this saurav jain i was not wrong this is info age india their brand is nokri they also had preferred domain names like 99 acres shiksha nokri.com and all that uh, uh, stuff right and of course they are also now an investor into uh, zomato okay so these are some of you know very famous uh, i don't know if you if you kind of need, need to talk about this as uh, you know related companies but having different uh, logos and stuff like that okay so why do we need to go to market that's a very interesting question i think uh, you should ask you know why why do you really need mass market uh, acceptance uh, when it comes to your own product uh, there is basically first of all i think you can't get major serious revenues unless there's a market uh, uh, big market for your product right i mean you can't just be the best cake shop in your in your locality right you need to be the best cake shop in your town then probably you need to be the best you know cake shop in your state and probably then the best cake shop in the whole country i mean that is how you will basically you know get some brand equity also done, right i mean it's very important in today's world right the moment we say colgate you know with that i mean such a, a deeply ingrained brand or a pepsi right i mean you don't just need to create anything the whole visualization comes right in front of you. You know, that's a soft drink and amazing and whatever, whatever. And today, amazing brands, yeah. I mean, today, what is called as internet first brands. These are the brands that have literally been born on the internet and have now become famous, right? For example, Dunzo. So if you're in Bangalore, you will all appreciate that Dunzo is now part of your uh, local language. So you forget something, you say, oh, don't worry, I'll Dunzo it to you. Or something like that. so it become so much i mean all in the last four or five years five years back nobody heard heard about dunzo right and especially if you're in bangalore there's some great brands that creep into your life without even you know uh, realizing it and these are these are brands that have they did not exist five six years back rapido for that matter if you know what rapido is you know it's it's exactly like a, 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 an ola uber but for two wheelers very popular amongst uh, youngsters. It's again not a new idea. This actually idea, if you know, was born in Indonesia. So there's a company called Gojek over there, which is which is probably 10 year old company. So Gojek, you know, did this for the first time in the world that can I use bikes as uh, taxis? Because Jakarta, if you've been there and I've been there, is very notorious for high traffic. I mean, you know, you can get just stuck in traffic for hours together. And not funny, right? So these guys with you know the Gojek jacket and a Gojek helmet would come out of nowhere. The mobile help in, in it's actually a brand that was born even before mobile. So it was a web-based website. So you could go to the website and you know order a Gojek and say, okay, I want it to be picked up from this point at uh, uh, five o'clock in the evening, and then you invariably find a Gojek driver waiting for you and you know take you through the traffic jams of Jakarta and so forth. So, okay, so basically, if you need to grow your business, you need to kind of have mark. Okay? So what happens is uh, a very interesting thing is that, you know, uh, what is also called as the Ida effect, but here we have used a different term called as the funnel effect. Ida is basically you create awareness, okay? 
create awareness how do you create awareness you know you plaster you know say, the walls with your brand names or put flyers and put everything over there advertising doesn't matter it's all going to cost you money but you first create awareness out once that awareness is created what customers basically do start considering say hey you know looks like now uh, you know uh, a very interesting thing that i'm seeing this ad over here i'm seeing some flyer out there somebody was mentioning me mentioning about me now awareness can be created a lot of ways huh? i mean i'm just giving you one way of doing it is the you know, old way of putting up posters or banners and stuff like that in today's digital world awareness can be created a million different uh, ways right controversies are also awareness creation right so you see this most of the time a big movie comes or something is going to happen you know and the 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 film industry is very notorious for this is you know it starts creating the padmini you know i don't know how many i don't know how many of you remember this movie padmini uh, deepika padukone and uh, ranveer singh padmini no? or marani padmini or whatever so you know created this huge controversy huge i mean every day in the news free publicity right you know people are burning posters people are doing this people are you know uh, giving galis to sanjay leela bhansali and every and you are not doing anything you are just letting it you know happen basically because now more and more people are just becoming aware that there is a movie called padmini and you know and then so and so and so on. so once that happens then there is a set of people who actively consider it okay actively consider it saying that okay yaar lagta acha hai no wo shalwa shala go and go to this restaurant you know looks interesting they have some very interesting things or so they start considering it a few of them you know actually go out and try it so that is called as a conversion that means after having actively considered whether to click on that buy button or not there are a lesser number of people okay who actually click on that okay and that is where the magic happens once the conversion happens when the customer is actually clicked on it whatever it could be free paid or whatever it is you need to ensure that there is certain amount of loyalty that means and there is a repeat buy comes you know a okay, case come to a restaurant once he like the biryani now is you know kind of coming up regularly and every time he wants to have a biryani he goes he goes comes to me there is a loyalty factor and the last and the best part that should happens is advocacy advocacy is when you go and tell someone hey look this biryani that vinayak makes in this restaurant is absolutely uh, you know uh, absolutely famous you should go and try it. that is where the true brand gets converted into you know actionable things where now one customer is going and getting you the next customer for years tough process it's not going to happen overnight but this is how you understand and why is it called a funnel because you see you create awareness at a higher level lesser number of people consider it still lesser number of people actually end up buying your product stuff like that still a smaller number of people stick to loyalty and from that loyalty comes the advocacy group part of it okay so uh Where are we in terms of? Let's talk about that part of it, right? I mean, you need to understand uh, uh, how do I go about creating this GTM? Again, this is all templatized. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you know, kind of trying to tell you uh, uh, what is there in the template. The template is again. very it's you have to be very thankful to the foundation because the foundation is somebody has taken this tremendous amount of effort to you know box this into frameworks and happen to you right it's not easy whatever knowledge we are today giving you has taken us years to kind of put them in a format that can you know you can consume so it becomes so easy easier for you to uh, you know uh, plan your go to market strategy over so this is one of the templates okay so you have to set okay how will customers you know how what will the customers do for example how will the customers make payment okay payment what is a payment how do i make 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 a payment i mean for my product what is it should i collect cash you know when should i collect cash should i collect cash before i deliver the product or should i collect the cash after i have delivered the product you know should i have my gpay account or should i have a bank account that is linked to payment should i only collect uh, cash what if the customer says that you know no i i, I don't want to give you cash i'm going to give you check 
then how should i be accepting the check so you have to get into all the details about how the customer engages with you you know in 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 this in this particular stage in this conversion stage right in this conversion stage you need to understand it what is it that the customer engages with me okay how does he became aware of my product did he ask for any pre information about my product for example if your product says you know great 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 so and so click on this or scan this uh, uh, qr code and the rest will become easy to you so the moment you scan the qr code what happens does it go to a website there is there an explainer video is there somebody who gives them a welcome message is there somebody who perhaps so today there are something called as uh, bots that you can actually write bots are nothing but a piece of software that actually takes a customer and answers all the queries over there so you must have seen bots right they have become so uh, ubiquitous nowadays that every practical app that you are talking about uses some kind of bots to help you then you can you know choosing for example you go to amazon the moment you decide to buy something amazon very cleverly says people who bought this also bought so and so and so right so if you bought a cup it say people also bought a saucer or people also bought a teapot or something like that so amazon very smartly tries to sell you something more than that so when you go and click on a book on amazon say people who purchase this book also purchase this particular book over there so they helps you make so you create a cart kind of an environment cart is a very <clears throat> Uh, what i should say it's the uh, modern day uh, carting or basically the whole idea of uh, using a cart is very fabulous if you you know want to go back to history and say how did this concept of cart we know cart as a simple cart right i mean you just add things to a cart and then go to me but this came from this whole concept that uh, started of course as usual in the united states states where they had this large shopping malls right and you walmart was one of the guys who kind of pioneered this whole concept that there will be an aisle and there will be a cart and you know you just pass by the aisle and whatever you like you just keep on dropping into the cart see the moment you go with a pre mind thinking that you know i am going to buy 1 liter of amul milk you will only go and buy 1 liter of amul milk which is what the old retail system was right you decide what you want to buy in that you didn't want to buy but today what happens is the moment you go walk into a mall of course you will buy that 1 liter of amul milk but with that you may buy some cheese you may buy something else you may buy cold drink something else. so invariably you end up spending much more and that is that was let's what the modern day miracle that marketers invented by when they made uh, you know those shopping malls and shopping aisles and those carts where you can just draw that part right it's a very important customer interface because now you are letting customers choose whatever they want to buy from a rack so there is no person who's like in the old kirana shop there should be a person you say mere ko 1 kilo you know shakkar chahiye he will give you 1 kg of shakkar that's it you don't get a choice but the moment you walk into a mall you can buy shakkar you can buy you know gehu you can buy tel you can buy shampoo and everything and you just keep on piling on to it so the software also is very interesting right that is what you know amazon figured out that if you cross sell a lot of this stuff then you know then it becomes easy for people to buy more things over there so there's a checkout system over there okay but of course amazon has this wonderful feature that you can always store it for future reference you don't need to buy it after. so there is a very responsible shopping that you can also do over there right so prepare this particular chart what will the customer do and this in this particular case i mean this is a case we discussed last time about how they want to build a platform for uh, uh, kid for parents who are worried that their kids are you know falling back so this is a typical example from that don't try to read uh, what is there and understand the format first so this is a typical case where they, you know you remember in our past conversations we had this uh, discussions on uh, on this particular uh, thing like that. okay so this is one way of pre- starting now you're prepping how you uh, want to go about with your gtm strategy okay so then you first look at marketing sales who's going to be doing that you know how many blog entries are we going to make an e brochure okay what is it that we are going to do are we going to send them some bulk emails over there more importantly is the finance finance is very important over here basically because you need to kind of pre understand how much is it all going to cost you right in the, at the end of the day when you're costing a particular product and saying that okay my cake is going to cost me you know 30 rupees when i sell it to a customer so beyond behind that 30 rupees you know there are cost elements 
how did it happen how many people were involved how many fixed costs have to be paid okay how many cakes do i need to really manufacture so that i can now sell this off to so this is typically in the pre mvp stage that you figured out with some cost and then you said okay you know i need some initial capital that i need to put that across part of it so this is financial projections we have done this in the past saying that you know this is what is going to cost you so this is very important marketing sales then comes finance so that helps you basically define okay what is going to cost you 20 lakhs you know where will the 10 lakhs come from okay it is going to come from some grants some funding somebody is uh, monthly i am going to spend this much over here i am going to you know dip into my savings and this is going to be so this 20 lakhs is what people call as the runway right runway that means this is the amount of money that you will need definitively to you know take your you uh, know uh, startup moving forward so you not going to fly but you need need that runway to create that momentum so that you can fly over here okay. then of course organization chart very important like i always say that have a clarity with the team who's going to be doing what you know create some i am not a big fan of uh, formal hierarchical you know uh, structured designated not even not not the initial that but it's good to have you know uh, not a must have but it's good to have some kind of a team structure in place that uh, you're talking about because that again leads to finances how much is it going to cost me for example here we have said that the monthly burn rate is going to be 3 lakhs of rupees okay so for 3 lakhs what is it that we are going to spend out part okay and of course you have to look at the product right because finally the product has to be manufactured i mean if it is even if it is a software it has to be done right i mean even if it's a game it has the game has to be written so there is a product that has to be actually made part of it right so all these four elements when they come together the most important part is how will you know that you know it is all these things are in perfect part of it so the best way to do this is to look at what we call as the matrix what is matrix matrix is nothing but the you know the asking rate in an ipl tournament or your uh, you know uh, uh, tutorial grades in your semester which basically you tell me whether you are going to you know flunk the semester or you are going to come with an a grade right so these are matrices there are some matrices that people uh, have figured out are uh, based on how many apps downloads happen you know downloads are not important you know how many of them actually uh, you know registered on the app so that is another matrix that you need to figure out so when not figure out you need to kind of keep that as targets that you want to achieve and say ki, okay so many people you know whatever 1000 people downloaded it okay but uh, only 400 people registered and out of the 400 people who registered there were only 50 people who actually engaged with the with the product okay that means they saw demo they kind of put that in the cart they kind of you know um, sent in some queries for a product so these are some success metrics again here this is a very very tricky area for early stage startups don't try to kind of see most of the time we try to measure what i call as the post facto metrics like for example we say okay in this semester i got 65 marks in whatever subject now that is the thing which is done and over and over with it doesn't matter whether you got 65 or 68 the idea was did you know at the middle of the semester that you would end up somewhere between 60 and 70% uh, as a grade if that was there and you have achieved it that means the metrics that means the things that you are monitoring was right same thing is with weight loss right i mean people struggle with weight loss and stuff like that right and you can't keep a target and say in 3 months time i'm going to drop 10 kg so then on the third month you realize that you hardly drop 2 kg so what went wrong is that you didn't measure as you carried on saying that okay to lose 10 kg in 3 months that means i need to lose at least 2 to 2 and a half kg you know in every 20 days i need to kind of keep on measuring my weight and see if i'm actually dropping those that weight or not and stuff like that so once you set this matrix up again like i said Take professional help. Take mentors' help. Uh, you know, sit with some experienced entrepreneurs, and uh, you know, try and understand okay, what are the metrics that uh, uh, that you should be using. Okay, so this is it. Okay, so now uh, I think what we are at seven fifty-seven, right? Uh, uh, 
I want to show a very interesting video to all of you. This is not a part of the original plan that we had. But Vinayak, let me stop this at this moment and you know come back to you and uh, kind of create that uh, uh, space so that you know you can ask questions. And we have some questions that are written over here. Is this similar EV testing, brand equity, Padmavati, Padmavati? Who is the most Padmini? Okay, quickly answer brand equity, right? It's a very important number, brand equity. What does brand equity mean? Brand equity means the, the, the value that somebody pays, okay? That somebody pays to appreciate what you're doing, okay? The value. Like the moment you say Amitabh Bachchan, right? I mean, what comes to your mind? You come a great personality, man. What voice, what legend, what, you know, amazing personality part of it is endorsed so many things. So Amitabh Bachchan as a name, as a brand, has a certain amount of equity. He can't start off, say, at Raj Bhatt level. Okay. So like my brand equity is a different in a different field. But let's assume tomorrow I go into uh, movies. I mean, I may not have a brand equity at this moment, right? I mean, nobody knows me. I am not a movie actor. Nobody is going to even get a t get me a t-shirt sponsorship, right? But, but the moment you say Amitabh Bachchan, you know, right? So brand and a very interesting definition of brand that I, I want to talk, tell everyone and Vinayak, you love this, is brand is something that people talk when you are not in the room. Okay. So this is very important. Now, what does brand mean? Is, you know, they should not in, in front of me, you know, anybody can come and say, hey, Raj, sir, you are so great, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the moment I'm not here and you guys are talking about me and saying, hey, we had a wonderful session. That is my brand. And that carries as an equity that somebody, okay, today Vadwani Foundation, we are doing this program. Tomorrow somebody comes and says, okay, sir, no, we know that you've done an excellent work with Vadwani Foundation. We would like to kind of, you know, come here and do this session. Sir. So that is my equity that is getting transferred. Equity is like people are now valuing what I am doing. And uh, you know, same thing happens, right? I mean, uh, Vinayak is in stand up comedy and stuff like that, right? Atul Khatri, I mean, I know Atul. 30 years back, he was my dealer in Wipro. I mean, I was the regional manager for sales and he was my dealer. And in my wildest dream, I ne could never imagine Atul as uh, as someone who, I mean, he had a funny streak, no doubt, even then. And he would make those nice, uh, you know, uh, one-liners and stuff like that. But today he's a brand, right? I mean, today, like you go and you see an Atul Khatri show, you know, people know who Atul Khatri is. People, you know, you don't need to go out and sell uh vipul goyal for that matter or you know some of these very uh, good startup kunal kamra or karunesh talwar i mean these are all my favorite uh, stand up guys so they are ca carrying a certain amount of brand equity right the moment they kind of announce i mean look look at these new age singers i mean just yesterday somebody sent me a mohit chahan uh, you know link and saying that hey you know mohit chahan is going to perform here would you be interested in coming so yeah, Mohit Chan is of course not, you know, way, way like, you know, Kishore Kumar or something like that. But he's absolutely a fantastic singer. More importantly, he's a fantastic performer. So anybody who's seen a Mohit Chan show live, will come back and tell you that, wow. I mean, it's same thing was with KK, unfortunately died so soon. But, you know, these guys kind of set the stage on fire, right? So that is brand equity, Ananya, I hope. Uh, yeah, brand value, you can say. You know, how much you value it? What, what money will you pay? To go, you see, one way of appreciating Mohit Chavan is to go and listen to his songs afterwards and not pay him anything. You know, you cannot pay Mohit Chavan anything. Is available for free on Spotify. Is available for free on Ghana.com and on YouTube, right? And he will never make money. But the very fact that you are actually going for a concert, you are actually buying, paying to your that is the brand equity he has created. And this doesn't happen overnight. It takes years and years of hard work. Amitabh Bachchan is what Amitabh Bachchan today, not because he is Amitabh Bachchan, but you know, his work towards being Amitabh Bachchan uh, that we know today. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. What you said about brand is something which people talk about when you're not there. I feel like that that is something which I'll take home from this session. That is quite an important point. I personally want to ask one thing. Can you explain the marketing funnel a little bit more? 
because I found it extremely interesting how and how can we so it, like it is a funnel, it's a funnel. So it's, mm -hmm. the technical name, if you go and check, is what is called as the IDA, okay? Awareness, interest, desire, and action. Okay, so that means you create awareness with 100 people, okay. And then you out of these hundred people, not everybody gets interested in your product, right? You went and kind of gave flyers to hundred people, out of which 70 people say, Hey, this looks interesting. So you create so 30 people will just throw that flyer away. It doesn't matter. But you see what happens when you go and advertise on television, you can't, you know, precisely go and target the target audience, right? On social media, also, you can try to target, but doesn't necessarily mean that all your communication goes right to that same person. So 30% will take well, it, they click ad, you know, I don't want. So these are the people who click and say, I don't want to see ads from Vinayak Joshi anymore. So 30% gone. So 70% are now interested. Okay. Out of this 70% who are interested, not everybody has the desire to buy that product. Okay. So they say, okay, you know, looks interesting. So let me go to Vinayak's YouTube channel. Let me see what Vinayak has to offer. Let me go and check what people are talking about when I see that's very important. That is why this influencer marketing comes into place, right? Today I have this girl called Prajakta Kohli. If you know her, she's again a startup comedian. She stays very close to where I stay over here. Some, I don't know, 17 million followers or uh, something on Instagram and stuff like that. Some massive social media influencer, right? And that, uh, who's that? Bhuvan Bam, right? So, but unfortunately, Bowen Bam couldn't create that equity into the web series that he made, right? I mean, people liked it, but kind of didn't. Uh, this guy did an amazing job. Your uh, uh, who's that? Kurana, uh, Ayushman Kurana. Yes. So very few people know that Ayushman Kurana started with early stages of IPL doing, uh, you know, those uh, uh, video small small videos. videos huh? Yeah, yeah, he was on RJ even before that. He was yeah, he RJ. was on RJ before that, RJ and then you know he did the small stuff for IPL and stuff like that, and then now graduated graduated into a major star. Right? So he's been able to carry that equity to the next level over here. So from that, in the funnel, hundred people you reached out, seventy showed interest, fifty showed a desire to engage with you. And only 20 actioned it. That means they actually came, bought the product, paid you the money. So it's always a funnel. It will always be a funnel. Okay. You can't say I reached out 100 people and 10,000 customers. I got 10,000 customers. Never works. Like you have to reach a higher number of people. Lesser will be interested. Some people will evaluate it. For example, they will say, then you say, you know, desire means, okay, I will buy from Vinayak Joshi or I may attend his show, but let me wait for others to do it first so they, they may not come for your first show they may come for your second show or something like that and they say okay i want to go to vinayak show but there'll be some people who say no yeah vinayak looks very interesting let's go out and do that so there is this whole uh we don't have that as a part of this discussion but there's a whole this bell curve that people talk about there are the innovators early adopters early majority so it's called as a, a product adoption curve so if you go to uh, google and just type product adoption uh, curve, you'll see one bell, bell, bell curve that comes into, it. and that's, that is very interesting because there will be few people who are very who are called as innovators. You know, they are like Salman Khan fans. So Salman Khan fans, irrespective of whether the movie is good, bad, ugly, useless, or whatever it is, on the first Friday they have to go and watch that movie, right? They have to go and watch. It's like crazy, crazy about. Whatever some that's the same thing that leads people to sleep on pavements when a new Apple product is launched. It is not that it is available cheap, so they go on the first day. In fact, they pay a full price to uh, you know go and watch uh, the first. Uh, I mean, the first version of iPhone 14 or uh, something like that, right? So these are the people. so they are very early. Then there comes the early adopters, people who wait for others to you know kind of go go to social media, watch reviews. You know, see how many people are talking about it and then go on a Sunday for that Salman Khan movie. So that people will go on a Friday who are like those absolutely crazy guys. And there are people who are kind of go on Sunday. And then it goes into this, you know, then if the movie is a real hit, like Tiger or you know, Sultan, then it gets it gets into this mass market. And, and then of course, after a while, the product also starts falling basically because no product remains at the top ever, right? I mean, you can't have an iPhone 12 selling forever. 
So one day an iPhone 12 will become a lower selling product. So Apple is very smart. The moment some products start falling down the sales, they'll come up with a new product. So smart marketing companies uh, do that. So uh, when I, if we do, if we don't have any other relevant hard pressing question, uh, I want to show this video, which is very, very fascinating and probably one of the best videos to show you how people adopt something in today's world. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a totally different video. So nothing to do with marketing and uh, i i hope uh, you know i can show you this video <clears throat> so just let me know if this screen is visible Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Maybe we can do an audio test. Play it. Just let us see if the sound is also visible. Okay. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making yes, a movement, the sound is visible. We can. Uh, the sound is audible. We can maybe uh, under three minutes that. and dissect some lessons. Good. First, of all, yes, audio is good. Maybe we should start it from the start so that. So it's, uh, it's, this is the start. Okay. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Huh? Let me, let me find the relevant video. Just. Guys, just. I've, I've seen this uh, dancing. I saw this dancing guy video uh, in the first year of my college. A uh, professor of mine showed it to me. And now that only one month of my college is left, it was so nostalgic to see it. Yeah. All right. Till the time, guys, you can ask any questions in the chat. Maybe we'll take it after the video is shown. Guys, how come you never ask me questions? What is this here? <laughs> I know I'm not the person who's taking the session, but you can always ask me anything, uh, as Saurabh does on the personal chat, so you can ask. Okay, sorry, you have a question related to a previous session. Okay, how about you write it in the chat and we'll take it after after the video. Are we ready with the video? Uh, is there any technical help which is required? So we stopped uh, the video, right? You can see me. Uh, yes, sir. We can see you. Uh, so oh. were you playing the video right now? Yeah, you didn't see the video. No, no, I thought you were uh, yeah, bringing up a video. I was talking oh, to the shit. chat. You guys didn't see the video at all? So, no, we did not see the video at all. Any I case, was... any case, I, 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 will, I, will, I will just write down, you know, the name of the video. Dancing Man. Okay. 
then you also check gf3 more a commentary on that okay whatever it is so this whole idea is that it needs one crazy guy one crazy idea to do it eventually it takes you know uh, some people to start believing in you and then it is not a serial progression so it's not that two people come on first day you no know, three third on the fourth day four on the fifth day then it starts becoming exponentially bigger okay same thing happens with your product with your product launch also initially you may feel there are not people are just not getting it or people are not kind of you know um, uh, what i should say uh, people are not kind of uh, understanding what my product is and stuff like that so don't worry it takes that much amount of time for people and that is what you need to do as a startup leader is you to believe in your own madness first okay you need to believe that yes this is going to work doesn't matter and then slowly you will see that you know how people just come join you and uh, right so thank you so much again vinayak sudanshu uh, for uh, today's session i'm open ear for any questions that they that you guys have i have a question related to our previous session me and my friend are both from same background but we are not able to figure out what job should we be taking for startup okay so saurav is am i trying to say that you and your friend can't divide the uh, roles uh, roles uh, in your startup is that what you are trying to say okay very easy i mean it happens because we are peers right i mean you are, you must be in the same class almost the same financial background almost the same skill sets level so you know both kind of uh, do that it's like what happened with larry page and sergey brin also they were both researchers they both had equal competencies to you know uh, develop the product and so on. so what you need to do is sit with a friend see what are those common areas that you know that 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 really add up because here the 2 plus 2 doesn't add up to 4 it 2 plus 2 adds up to 8 because you know you are also good at programming he is also good at programming great okay so between two of us i think we can crack the whole thing but then there are common areas which are not good for example you know somebody your friend is not probably very good at facing the customer you then he'll say okay look you are not good at facing the customer neither am i but i am willing to risk it out and go and start becoming the face of the company don't fight over designations okay i have seen ceos and joint ceos and all that kind of it and i i jokingly as joint ceo means or do you keep joints with you and you know like uh, uh, do you have a joint uh, kind of a thing so uh, this is something that you know shouldn't fight over it keep the space absolutely open okay uh, find out common areas find out those things that are not going to be there finances could be one thing you know some people are gifted with understanding numbers finance business profits stuff like that some people you know i mean you can threaten to throw them off the cliff and they will never understand finance so you need to figure out which of them is good basically what i call as inventorying your skill sets okay so your skills are a set of inventory that you have you don't know some of them are hidden some of them are very obvious but everybody has certain inventory of skills you need to kind of put that whole baggage down and say okay now let's tally our inventory and say who's going to do that or get a mentor or a professor of yours somebody to come in and you know uh, let them decide for yourself and learn this concept that it it always has to be a win win situation I don't know if I told you this Sam Altman statement last time that uh, trouble happens when either founders want the uh, same thing for themselves or different things for the company. Okay, so that is one big uh, uh, red flag that will be there. All right. Are there any other questions from the audience? Thank you, sir. Maybe a question related to branding, sir. Uh, can I ask a question related to branding? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so um, I, even though I was a stand-up comic, I am a stand-up comic, and uh, in person I am an extroverted person, but I have never been extroverted digitally. 
and uh, after covid i found out that digital extroversion is something completely different so uh, as more the more and more i work and the more and more i get into my field i just feel it's inevitable and it's extremely urgent for everyone to build a personal brand now whether that's good or not that so vipul goel vipul goel used to regularly post you know those five minute uh, stuff some of them were you know ridiculous but theek hai chalo yaar vipul ka you know he kept himself busy i mean he just stared at a camera and you know would crack some jokes or something like that then he got a couple of other guys to also come and then they would create this fire side kind of a thing and so and they built tremendously i mean in fact some people like ankur wariku and all if you know they actually built their brand during the lockdown they are practically unheard of uh, you know in the pre uh, lockdown stage and ankur wariku i should respect him a lot because he practically became a household name okay during the lockdown because people were at home you know a lot of people are losing jobs everybody wanted to know what stuff about startups and blah 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 so he created this great brand uh, that people know about. how can we like create a personal brand out of it and because i feel like that is also very entrepreneurial uh, an entrepreneurial thing to do because it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or in a job i found people around me who just have a personal brand and when you actually talk to them about it they don't know anything so uh, it's like in today's uh, world honestly there are a lot of people the so called social media influencers or people who will tell you that i have 7 million instagram followers and i really do say ki why why are 7 million people following you yaar for what reason okay i mean say no 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 i have acquired this over a period and then i do somehow this is something which i am not able to comprehend i mean i respect people i respect people who have that many amount of you know million followers and stuff like that i mean i can appreciate mr narendra modi having some 70 million 80 million followers on twitter okay he is the prime minister of the country you know kind of has something important to say uh, stuff like that okay but some guy random guy comes and says ki i have 7 million followers and i can you know help you build your brand uh, uh, so uh, vinay on a personal note i will connect you to someone a girl a, a friend of mine a lady a professor again young a very young person she is the one who is responsible for ankur wariku's brand building on the net Okay. I mean, she's the actual person behind the digital strategy part. Ankur Wariku is a face, right? Of course, a lot of input would have come from Ankur Wariku, no doubt about it. But uh, she's the one guy. So she created those conversations around. She created those, those blogs. She created those, you know, community interest groups around over there. She created that visibility for Ankur Wariku to come and you know talk about it. She created those events. So it's a very long, drawn-out digital. You know, strategy map that you really need to work on. You need to say, okay, eighteen months from now, this is what I will, I will be. Okay. Oh. Or you Thank create, you. go and slap someone, or create some controversy. You know, <laughs> you know, my favorite example is the kacha badam guy, right? I mean, uh-huh. I, see, I have this whole session that I do this, right? Kacha badam, right? And what happened? Immediately, I think within twenty-four hours or forty-eight hours. This guy just went berserk uh, on internet, right? And, uh-huh. and we live in that world today, right? And we live in that world where that Bhuvan uh, Badhyakar, I know, I know his name, just went from nobody to, I mean, he was there practically on every and free, free of cost. I mean, you know, he was there on television channels giving interviews and you know, uh, signing up for music labels based on one video somebody posted somewhere. Yeah. Wow, uh, it is an interesting topic, especially in these times. But yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions in the chat? So, do we have time for one more question in the chat? Yeah, sure, sure. So, guys, any other question in the chat? If not, then I will invite Sudanshu for uh, the journal filling. And uh, on that point, there's also a link that he shared in the chat about ten minutes ago. You can click on the link. But apart from that, any other questions? So anyone who wants to build their brand or anyone who is starting a company who wants to know about the legalities of it I don't think there is any other question so I would like to invite Sudhanshu right now Sudhanshu uh, thanks Raj thanks Raj for being 
so guys i have already uh, shared this uh, link uh, with you, all of you on the chat window just click on it mirror let me share my screen do give a thumbs up once you uh, uh, are able to see my screen uh, yes we can see your screen great so just click on the link guys it will uh, direct you to this page click on the expand bet button so that you can have a full view so we have collated the journals and feedback in a single link so you don't have to wait for multiple links first of all i request each of you to enter your name and then move to the main question so it says what channels would be suitable to reach my customers in the following stages of the sales funnel based on my product service so these are the different uh, stages mentioned below. So it says make a list of suitable channels in the space below each stage. So these stages are awareness, consideration, and conversion. So we have uh, 45 seconds to fill all these three boxes. Once you are done, just give me a th thumbs up. We'll go to the next question then. So Saurav, Rashim, Shitja, Ananya, Diksha, Anupam, Aditya, I'm waiting for a heads up from you guys. Let me know in a chat uh, window if you guys are facing any issue with the link or anything. Any confusion related to any of these questions, we'll be happy to answer. Any more second, guys? Not able to see any such submissions, guys. Please be active. Because these general questions are very important for us and for you as well. Aditya Anupam, Saurav. Guys, give a heads up so that we can move to the next question. Am I audible, guys? Because I'm not able to see any responses as such. Vinay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah you are audible, uh, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So I request all, all guys. participants to proactively fill these uh, general question and feedback form. Okay. And do give a thumbs up on the chat window. If you don't want to type anything, just give a thumbs up. That will also work. So moving to the next question. So the next question is, who are some peer mentors that I should connect with to get started with the GTM strategy for my product service? So you can make a list uh, based on your understanding uh, during this session. So the last one is how confident do you feel in your ability to successfully launch and market your startup to your target audience? The five options are not confident at all, slightly confident, neutral, somewhat confident, confident, very confident. You have to simply select one of these op options. And then finally, you have to click on the submit button. So we are going to wait for another one minute. I'm assuming you guys are finishing your uh, these general questions. It would be good if you can give me a thumbs up. I haven't uh, received any response from any of you. Aditya, Anupam, Diksha, Ananya, Shitija, Rashim, I'm waiting for your responses. Can't see any of these responses here. So, okay, guys, I'm assuming you guys have filled it, but you haven't responded in the chat window. So closing this window and the previous session recording has already been uh, uh, uploaded there. So you can move to the seminar session tab. Sorry. 
your uh, my resources tab and you'll be able to see previous session recording here it's already uploaded so whosoever has missed the previous session you can uh, watch these videos there apart from this let me give you a brief about the session seven additional references as well so we are going to uh, upload the recording in session resources in uh, next 24 hours apart from that you can see the quick recap of the session a brief about the upcoming session and these are the additional references these are all these smaller uh, two three minute videos we have two such videos and there is one case led video here by East Jinder. once you're done with this you have to simply go to take action section And these are the templates already uploaded here, branding and positioning template, channel strategy template, brand identity, customer engagement, GTM approach, launch planning, legal and compliance checklist, risk management, SWOT analysis. This time it's a bit detailed one. We have all these eight templates. All these are PPTs basically. You simply have to download this PPT and you have to fill as per your understanding. All right, guys, I am done. Shitija, I have received a response from Shitija that uh, she has filled all the responsibility. Others, please, you guys also respond and proactively fill these journals. These are very important, but hardly take two or uh, three minutes of use, not more than that. Okay, guys, I think I am done. Over to you, Vinayak. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so do you want to say something? No, no, I'm just all right. All right. So uh, we have extremely few sessions left. I think we're 75 percent uh, into our course. And um, it's so glad to see a few regular people, you know, seven or eight people who are coming in every class. And I hope to see you guys till the end class, till the last class, especially the ones who have been here since the first class, you know, uh, you know how people in snapchat these days do streaks so let's do something similar to that here and um, thank you very much everyone thank you to the students thank you Advani foundation thank you sir and thank you sudhanshu so see you guys again thank you thank you take care stay safe bye bye